Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese and welcome to the Scrapbook Showgram. Today we're talking about wreaths. Now here is the wreath that we're going to make and you can probably tell that it's been created using book pages pages that I ripped out of an old book and then formed into cones. Initially, I started the wreath thinking I was going to create it for the holidays, which is why you see the word joy in the middle. However, I didn't actually finish it in time, and it occurred to me that I have made wreaths out of leaves for the fall. I've made heart wreaths for Valentine's Day. Really, a wreath is something that I tend to want to use for lots of different seasons and different events and different holidays. So I'm going to show how easily this can convert into one for, in this case, it could be Valentine's Day. But actually, I want you to keep your mind open because it could really be anything. We'll be showing a photo inside and all kinds of stuff. Now, to begin with, let's look at the actual wreath itself. If I turn it around, you'll see that the structure is all being held together with just an ordinary cardboard circle. And then it's being hung with ribbon that's just attached through a little hole that I've punched. So let's start with that cardboard circle. What I did first is I took a plate, a serving plate, out of my, um, I don't know how to cook, but I do eat. <laughs> and I do have friends over, so of course I have the dishes. I don't have pots and pans for cooking, but I have all the other stuff. So I took a plate and I laid it down and I just used it and traced around it in order to cut the circle out of cardboard. And then it turns out I really felt like I needed to mark the, the four quadrants. I need to mark the center of that circle. So I went ahead and using the same pattern, the same plate, I cut out, um, I could have used the, the cardboard, but I didn't. It was easy to just take the plate and I cut out of mailing paper a second circle and I've cut it out. And then all I did was I folded it in half and then I folded it in half again. And what that does, where these folds intersect, is it gives me the center of the circle. So if I mark this, um, I poked, you know, just a pin through it, or in this case, a, an old opened up paper clip, it marks the center. I can use this in order now to mark where is the center in this actual, the cardboard circle that's underneath. So if I take and I lay my circles on top of each other, and then with a pin, I'm gonna mark the center right through that hole that I punched out. So here is now the center of the circle. Well, I want to be able to get the cones that I'm gonna be putting on these pages. I want them to sit straight. If I bring this up, maybe I can explain it better if you're looking at it. I didn't wanna take the chance that as I worked my way around the circle that I would start twisting them in such a way that when I got to the end, it wouldn't look right anymore. It would be almost parallel instead of perpendicular to this center section. So the easiest way to do that, a friend of mine pointed out, was to mark my circle into fourths. So using the center line, I'm going to mark and draw the halfway point. And then now using the folded uh, pattern that I created, I'm going to see where I would want to mark the other half. So I can do this and then I can simply pull this over and now I can draw the other section with my pencil. So I've drawn the four sections. So as I go back and I add in the cones, I'm going to add first a cone here and then here and here and here and that way I can ensure that I'm building all of them correctly and I don't end up twisting them accidentally as I'm attaching them to the cardboard. In order to put the cones in I want to first decorate the middle. So I took and I just cut a four, a, it's the diameter of this circle is four inches and I need to place it in the center. However the cones are going to cover the edges. So it doesn't have to be exact. It just needs to be roughly. You can eyeball when you feel like you have it pretty close to the center because the cones are going to come in. I, I purposely cut it larger than it needed to be in order to make sure that the cones would cover over it. You could, you know, cover the whole cardboard with red, but you know, you don't really need to do all that. Then it was time I cut a smaller circle and I used this circle. In fact, if I measure it, I can tell you that the, the diameter of this one is two and three-fourths. 
is the diameter of this. This I'm just using as a guide. I use this to place in the middle of the red circle and I've got just a tiny little bit of removable adhesive is gonna hold it on there. That just holds it in place. This is my guide for where I'm going to align all of these paper cones. Now, in order to attach the cones, I need to make them first. So let's show you. You've probably done this a million times in grammar school for all kinds of necklace projects. I remember making this way. But basically, this was the size of of the book pages when I tore it out of the book. Then I went back and I ripped these pages in half. So I ended up, each page actually generated two cones. And that just, that's, I did that size because it ended up resulting in a shape or the size of cone that looked good for the size of the circle that I drew. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on this corner and I'm going to then use that adhesive so that as I pull this around, I'll, I'll start it and then I'll get my hands out of the way so you can see. The adhesive is going to hold it closed as I curl this into this cone shape. So I'm just curling it around. And as I get to the end, I'm going to put adhesive now on this which means that as I continue to curl, I then have the adhesive on that edge. And I even went back later with um, something like a fat pencil and placed it, I put it in my hand and I did this to really give that adhesive a nice strong bond and just rolled the pencil right over the edge that has the adhesive. So you're going to do that in order to create lots of cones. Now, once you have all the cones created, then you're going to attach them. And once, I, once again, this white paper was my guide. I'm going to attach them like so. And like I said, you're gonna to wanna to do the four edges and then work to the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a few down so you kind of get the idea of what I mean. I'm gonna start, I'll bring up some double stick tape. You can use whatever adhesive you prefer, um, but I'm going to put adhesive, and you can either put it on the cardboard itself or you could put it on the cone, either way. And using this white paper as a guide, and then I like this tip to be what's facing out, I'm going to align this with my first pencil line. And then I'm going to just reach in there and make sure that I'm fastening so that I'm attaching this to that tape. Now, I would put much more tape than that. If I, you know, I did when I made mine, I'm just doing this quickly. I'm going to, once again, put tape on the second section, which would allow me then to bring in a cone. Once again, I'm going to align this with my white center, and I'm going to place this in. And if you can't get your finger in there, then just take, once again, a pencil or a pen or something that will allow you to get in there and put some pressure so that you can make sure that the cone that you created has now got good contact with the tape or whatever adhesive you have underneath. I would do the other four cones, but I'm gonna skip ahead so that I can show you. You're then going to position this the same way. I'm gonna put adhesive here, but I'm also gonna put adhesive on the side so that not only do I have the cones fastened to the cardboard, but they're also fastened to each other. It's just that little extra adhesive that I think will make sure that all of the layers will stay together. And I'm gonna see if I can do this with my tweezers so that my hands aren't in the way. Where this is going to touch, if I lay this down, you can see that where it's going to touch is right about there. So I'm going to place double stick tape right on the cone that's already there. I'll bring in more of the adhesive and I'm gonna go ahead and place it right next to the cone that we just did but this time right on the cardboard. And then I'll bring in the second cone. Once again, I'm gonna line it up with this strip and I'm going to position it. And this time, as well as making sure that it, it fastens down onto the cardboard and the adhesive there, I'm gonna also kind of roll it and make sure that it's attached to the little bit of adhesive that I put on the cone. In that fashion, you're just gonna continue creating more cones 
<laughs> and attaching them all the way around the circle. It is it is incredibly easy to do and it's kind of fun and if it bothers you to use the book if you don't have a book that you feel comfortable tearing I was sharing all my books with my friends and then they all went to e-readers and so I didn't have anybody to share them with anymore so now I'm just trying to recycle them but if you still have sitting around an old election pamphlet you can do anything like this all of these would roll up easily into some nice cone shapes you could also, if you've got this time of year, you probably still have lots of catalogs left over from the holidays. If you want colored cones, you could do that as well. At any rate, you're going to continue putting cones all the way around. When you get to the end, you're gonna pull out this, which was only a guide. And, oh, you know what? I have skipped a stop, a step, but let me go back and show you how important it is. You are going to want, obviously, to hang your wreath. So before you fill it in, while it's still empty like this, you're going to want to reach in and, it, you know, it, when you're first starting, it really doesn't matter where. I'm punching a hole and I'm going to take a long piece of ribbon. How long the ribbon is, is really up to you. It depends on how how much you want this to hang. You know, if you're hanging it where it's going, you hardly want the ribbon to show at all, then you don't need the ribbon to be much very long at all but if you want it to hang like from a window ledge or someplace where it's going to hang a long distance then you're going to want the ribbon to be long i've tied a knot in it depending on what size hole if you need if your hole is not going to um let me i'll poke this through and you'll see what i mean i'm going to position this i'm going to poke it through from this side so that the knot so that the knot is going to be on what would be the top. I'll use my tweezers to sort of start this and then I'll try to turn this around so you can see. I'm going to just pull this through like so and pull it until the knot is flush with this side. Now, if it wants to pull all the way through, you just need to double up and tie it again and make a fatter knot. Once, depends on what size hole and what thickness of ribbon you're using. But once you have that hole there, then I went back, remember, this is all gonna get covered up with cones. So I went ahead and I used double stick tape to fasten this down, knowing that there's just that much more adhesive for as I work my way around with cones, it's gonna cover that up. And that means that it's gonna hold this up nicely. Once you have that there and you have all the cones, let's talk about the center. Now what I did on mine, let me show you this one. Here is the wreath that I did. And as I mentioned, I started with the word joy because I thought I was gonna be doing this for the holidays. So I have two rows. I have a deeper shade of red, um, two circles that I've cut out and I'm gonna just decorate the top one. If I'm wanting this for Valentine's Day, instead of writing joy, I might write I love you or maybe even just the word love. So let me take and write, oh and my pen of course is taking this moment to uh, to run out. Let's see if I can just get enough out of it to finish this. You would go back and color it in more heavily, but I use if you've watched the showgram, you've seen me use, I use this white pen all the time. So it's not surprising to me that it is starting finally, this particular one to wear out. But you can add as much detail into the center section as you want. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two layers of foam. I'm gonna put foam on the larger circle and I'm going to put foam onto the smaller circle and I'm going to just stack them up like so, so that the darker is on the outside. And then I would remove the backing, place this onto the center. I'll bring this back up so you can see this. Place this onto the center. Remember now you've got the cones already going all the way around. That's if you want like a message. You could put a little mirror inside. Um, there's a lot of mid-century modern uh, mirrors I see nowadays, and they all kind of have, they're usually made out of metal, but they have this look to them with the mirror in the inside. You could even put a photo. I have a photo from Danny and Erica's wedding, and I thought, yep, here it is. They sent these magnets out with 
their photos inside and I realized how fun this really looks cool if this is placed into the center. Um, let me turn this facing me so I can see what I'm doing and I'll go ahead and place it in and then show you. You would just go ahead and put adhesive on that. You could put, you could cut a circle size photo. In this case, I've got a heart shaped photo. Really, the possibilities are endless. Who knew that ordinary book pages would convert so easily into such a beautiful wreath?